Hi guys, Micro here. This is my quest for survival hardcore Iron Man series. In this series we're on episode 13 now and in this episode I go to Dagonoff Kings to get a dragon hatchet and I get some insane clue luck. Definitely a lot more happening in this video than previous ones and I'm finally able to start going bossing and things like that. So we're going to start off with the easy ones like Dag Kings and progressively get harder and harder. So let's get into this video. Starting the video off with some Slayer, I got 64 Slayer while killing Turofs and I was going to do every single hard clue I got from them as they give quite a few. Ah, uh, that clue was pretty bad. Gave me a Rune Pickaxe, 2 Rune Plate Legs, 75 Astral Runes, 75 Blood Runes and some Guffix Arrows. I guess the Guffix Arrows can be useful but meh. Another fortunate component to add to the counter towards 50 for the Luck of the Dwarves eventually, I guess. I also got 20k Mystic Wall Staff, some Law Runes, and a Rune Kite Shield, so a little bit in Alka Balls as well. Definitely not a bad clue, could be much worse. Ugh, that clue's pretty trash. Good job I got a reroll, hopefully I get something good. I got Robin Hood Hat! <laughs> I don't care, I'm happy. Robin Hood Hat and a Saradomin Stole in the same clue. Robin Hood hat on Iron Man for so much swag points, I can't wait to wear it. Ah, oh, keepsake that bad boy straight away. Now it was time for me to go kill Dagonoff Kings with magic, because you can safe spot them pretty well, and a god staff should kill them nice and easy. To get to the Dagonoff Kings, you have to run through a giant long stretch through loads of different monsters. All you gotta do is protect the certain spell that the monsters do, so it'll be melee for the rock crabs, range for the Dagonoffs, and melee for certain Dagonoffs too and then melee for the granite crabs as well. And then you want to keep running until you get to a giant open area with all of the different types of monsters. I usually protect mage here because normally those ones are the ones that are going to hit you the most. Either protect mage or protect from range. So what you need to do is you need to climb down the ladder in the middle of the big area. But when you get to the ladder, it is sometimes really hard to get down. The best way to do this is go stand around the corner where those little rocks are as you can see, if I keep clicking the ladder, I'm in combat so I can't get out. But if I stand behind these little rocks and then try and enter the fight, normally you're much safer and you're line of sight in most of the ranged mobs, so they can't hit you. Entering the encounter from behind these rocks is much, much easier. Make sure you set it to fastest and go. Once you're inside the encounter, you need to run to the southeast. I thought it was the northeast at the first try, so I went to the northeast to save spot him. I managed to get one kill, but when I actually went to go loot, I got piled by the magic Dagonoff King, and the magic one is no joke. It definitely hits super hard. I then kind of panicked a little bit and ran through the magic one to the range one as well, and I tried to get up the ladder, but I saw I was taking way too much damage, and I just wanted to get out of there, so I used my teleport tab to go back to Falador. I got hit for like another 1,500 as soon as I got to Valador as well so it's kind of weird that they can hit you even after you're teleported if the missile's coming towards you definitely a good idea that I teleported out when I did because I probably would have panicked and not made it up the ladder and died so the first close call to losing a life on my Iron Man was just then but then I went straight back there and went southeast rather than northeast and it made life so much easier once you actually go to the correct corner the southeast corner you just need to hug against the wall. As you can see, the Dagonoff spawn in the middle. Rex is always pretty close. You can just step out a tiny bit and aggro him like that. Make sure the other ones aren't too close when you step out to aggro Rex. Rex will come towards you. As he's coming towards you, you can then run around the rock to save spot him behind that rock. Make sure when you're running around the rock, you run to the far east and stay on the edge. This means you're still out of the range of the other Dagonoff Kings. And then you can easily just sit here, kill the boss. It takes a little while as you do splash a fair amount. Definitely worth taking fire runes to use a fire spell here because fire spells are what he's weak to. So you're going to hit a lot more often when you're using his weakness. Also when you need to pick up an item, if you drop an item from your inventory you can area loot it while standing at the edge still. This minimizes the risk and minimizes you having to actually run out anywhere. Then you can just hug the edge again, stay where you were at the start, wait for Rex to spawn again, make sure the other ones aren't near him, aggro him and repeat the process. If you do this correct you can stay here for an hour every single time very easily. I take a full inventory of food even though I don't need it just in case back 
bad things happen but I normally just eat the food for space of bones and things like that. Definitely a really easy and effective way to kill the Dagonoff Kings and I'm going to do this all the way until I get a Dragon Hatchet. Hopefully it doesn't take too many kills but we'll see. While killing the Dagonoff Kings I managed to hit 73 magic. They're pretty good magic experience to be honest alongside being pretty easy and safe with this safe spot. Continuing my ports, I do as many special voyages as I can to progress the story as quickly as possible. I'm still doing it as much as I can. I take my captain log everywhere with me so I can right click and I can send voyages just with it in my pocket slot. This saves me hassle not having to teleport all the way back here every time. I can just send it off with my pocket slot by reading the book. I only have to come back here with story missions like this one. But I sent my ships back out, waited for the story mission to be finished, continued to get loads and loads of bamboo, and on my way to unlocking gunpowder and the next island. Oh, my first rare drop, I got a berserker ring. I guess it's kind of meh, because I'll always be wearing my ring of luck for a good while, and then I'll probably upgrade it to a ring of fortune and stuff anyway. Probably not going to be the best ring that I have, and I probably won't wear it to be honest, but I'll keep it either way, and a drop's a drop. Now give me the dragon hatchet. Now this drop was a really cool item. A Dagonoff teleport tab is a really useful thing. These teleport tabs allow you to teleport directly to the Dagonoff Kings. This means you don't have to go through that really annoying, really long passage and go through all of those monsters. You can just teleport straight there and get to the boss. Definitely one of my favourite drops from it that isn't a super rare one. After that hour, I geared up again and I cracked the teleport tab. As you can see, when you crack that teleport tab, you go up on this level. If you climb down this ladder, you're at the back of the Dagonoff King's lair. This means if you run down just this short stretch with barely any monsters, you're now in that giant open area where you can stand behind the rocks and enter the encounter. Once you've entered the encounter, do what you normally do, run to the southeast. And in the southeast, you can easily safe spot the boss and get some more loot. A warrior ring. I didn't want a warrior ring. Ah, 120 kills, no hatchet. Let's go see how many we can do. I got another berserker ring. Uh, <laughs> I don't want the berserker ring. Give me my hatchet. I got it! Yay! <laughs> it was my ring of wealth. It got me the dragon hatchet. Ah, oh, <laughs> yay! Let's see the kill count is 203. <laughs> Yay. Right, adding that to the tool belt and I'm off. Now it was time to high out all of the items I got from Dagonoff Kings. So I got 108 bones in total because I buried quite a lot of the ones I got as drops. And most of these are the noted bone drops. I got 6 Berserker Helms, 5 Warrior Helms, 4 Rock Shell Helms, a Rock Shell Plate Body, 5 Rock Shell Legs and some Rune Warhammers. Not to mention that I got the Warrior Ring and 2 Berserker Rings alongside the dragon hatchet. So I emptied my coin pouch and high out every single one of these items except for the bones obviously. All of these items then added up to be over a mil in GP and I definitely didn't use that much in instance fees. These were just the big drops, obviously there was plenty of smaller drops and some shark drops which added up as well. All in all a really nice boss and I'm happy I didn't die from that one mistake and I didn't mess up at all in the 203 kills after that one mistake. Safe spot in them is really, really effective and really great. With my dragon hatchet, I headed over to Apatol to start chopping those teak trees to try and get 76 wood cutting. There's no chopping animation as a monkey. The monkey just stares at the tree and you get logs. What? <laughs> I'm going to be woodcutting whenever I'm AFK and doing voiceovers to get that 76 so I can do branches of Dark Mare as soon as possible. I started off doing a farm run with all of the awesome maple trees and stuff I got from Kingdom. The first tree gave me 65 farming and by the time I got to the last tree of the run it got me to 66 farming. Farming is so damn quick when you have those awesome tree seeds. And then speaking about 66, I also got 66 Slayer doing a Grot Worms task using that awesome red salamander. It definitely rips into them so so easy. Ooh, a clue scroll. Let's go get another Robin Hood hat, boy. Okay, that clue wasn't a Robin Hood hat. <sighs> Just more alcohols and I guess, what are these teleports? Lumberyard. Okay, so some Lumberyard teleports are quite nice, to be honest, especially if I have to travel to the sawmill at all. I'm okay with this. I've got an ancient effigy. I, I'm, I'm never ever going to be able to do it, but 
It's a rare drop. So as you can see, I got given a cow fights task and I decided to do the exiled cow fights because they're so good for charms and drops. If you go down into the exiled cow fights cave and just run down the long corridor till you get to this U-turn, you can easily safe spot them. If you just stand in the middle of this U-turn, they can't actually hit you from either side. You can also quite well area loot from where you're standing as well. So it makes it very, very easy and you'll never really ever get hit. If you do get hit, you have some emergency food just in case. Definitely a really awesome task, it's some amazing experience and it's super safe and chill. After the cow fights task, I did a cash and I got 83 divination. Two more levels until I could do those big memories. Also remember, if you're doing big chin chomper, one of the rewards is swamp tar. Swamp Tar isn't normally a good reward, but when you're an Iron Man, that Swamp Tar could be super helpful, especially if you're using a Salamander. So I'm turning that Swamp Tar with my reward points into ammunition for my Red Sally. Using my Red Salamander, I went to Greater Demons that I had for a task. It got me to 68 Slayer, and it was actually super easy with the Salamander. Greater Demons are definitely one I will do again. Thanks for watching, I hope you did enjoy this episode, there was actually some bossing and stuff in it, so hopefully it was a bit more entertaining than the previous, and not just all experience gains. Hopefully in the next video I'll be going to Barrows and getting some loot there, trying to get some tier 70s, especially a tier 70 range weapon. Give the video a like if you did enjoy, subscribe if you're new for future content, and until next time, see ya.